Welcome and thank you everyone for joining us today for our Deception webinar. Um, first of all, to introduce myself, I'm Andy Bushby, I look after Fidelis in the UK and I'm pleased to say with me is Doran Colton. Doran is uh, our CTO of Emerging Technologies at Fidelis Cybersecurity and also the founder and inventor of this technology we're going to be talking about as the main subject of our presentation today. One thing just to be aware as you go through the session, if you've got any questions, please um, type them into the Q&A uh, chat panels and we'll take those at the end of the session and we'll pick up a couple of those um, right at the end, depending on how we go with time. Organizations today have been challenged more and more with security and various different aspects of security and different security cyber challenges are coming on a daily basis. And as such, Organizations have a, a technology estates that have grown over time. Everything from firewall and antivirus, which is seen very much at, at the lowest level and are mandatories right the way up to organizations with SIEMs, security analytics, forensic technologies as well. All of which have been deployed by organizations to normally solve an individual latest challenge. Um, and the problem is as they add more and more of these technologies and, and they expand their estate, what really often happens is they generate more workload because each of these systems generate more alerts and those alerts are often not very detailed in what you need to do as the next step. What is the problem you're actually looking at? Just that this is a potential problem and we've seen a clue that alerts to that. So what we often see is more alerts, organizations with millions of alerts a day, but therefore more work and the ability to triage these and respond to these is getting more and more of a problem for organizations because the big challenge is we have no more people to deal with them. And that's where we, as, as Fidelis, have focused around trying to help organizations in this space by not only giving you technology to try and help solve the problem and, and give you clues to issues, but actually to automate the detection and response paradigm itself. So uh, as the SOC team, you have the ability to see ch there is a challenge coming in across the network that you want to actually resolve, but will actually validate that has actually hit an endpoint. Maybe if it hasn't hit the endpoint, it's been blocked by something you don't have to worry about it. So you have the ability to triage the process, but actually to pivot very quickly to investigation and response into one platform. And often we're in a circumstance where we not only can see that, but we can actually automate those next steps. We can automate the retrieval of processes off the machine. We can automate the isolation of machines. And as organizations, we have to continue evolving and our latest evolution and, and component of the platform that we're talking about today is how we can start thinking about a proactive defense model. And we're going to talk about our deception technology in this space. We like to think about the, the you know, the deception module being a bit like um, the canary in the mine. We know we've not seen canaries in the mine since 1986 in the UK. So more than 25 years ago since, since they were actively used. But the concept that needn't go away. The idea was um, there was a symbiotic relationship between the canary and the miners. You know, they they would alert the miners that there was problems with with gas um, in the mine as they went down, and equally they got fed and looked after and very by the miners as well, and seen almost as mascots. Um, we want to take that same sort of concept of something that's going to take give you that early warning to the environment, and that's where decoys and deception technology comes in. So it gives us the ability to have a proactive early warning system. Um, decoys effectively are facades in the network that pretend to be a real part of your estate. And if they get touched um, in any shape or form, if they get tried, someone tries to consume them, to use them, then we know there's an issue because they should never be actively touched. So we get this proactive early warning system. The great thing about deception technologies is it's an accurate detection of real threat because either it's clear use of visibility around east-west lateral movement, so someone is already compromised the machine and is now trying to move laterally inside your estate to harvest data or to find information, in which case an alert that someone's touched one of your decoy machines needs to be investigated straight away. Or secondly, it's an insider. Someone who's already inside your network is trying to look around where they shouldn't be. Either way, we have a clear um, need to actually be alert and action these threats. So whereas we've been talking about alerts that may be an issue and we have thousands of them, we now have a, a smaller number of very high um, value alerts with inside this estate. And we see a near zero false positive with these. 
we have to say there's near zero because sometimes you'll have technology that's out there scanning to see whether new machines have been added to check for patches etc and it's very quickly to pick those up in the first week or so and then exclude those from your alert list so we have then a very good early warning system inside the estate so what is fidelis deception so what we have with with our deception technology is, is the ability to go out and proactively discover the services and applications that are on your network and therefore we can then create a profiles of those and then recommend decoys that need to be set up to emulate if you like um, your state itself so we'll find FTP servers we'd find um, Windows file set shares we might see Macintoshes Windows 10 machines all the different types of you know services that are on your network database servers and from there we can then set up emulated versions of those environments on our decoy setup um, but, but not only do we to create these decoys we also set up the lures to bring people to those so we set up um, what we call mini traps or, or the breadcrumbs to lead people to the decoys so if a machine gets compromised when they someone's working through that and you've got the that machine they not only will find the leads to go to your real servers and your real estate but also the pieces of clues that highlight that these decoys exist but they'll consider those as real machines so they're less just likely to find these real machines and then when we touch them we detect that access and then we can then control how that access happens so we can only allow access based on certain credentials being passed we can control the length of time we respond so we can make response longer so that we can have a better chance of catching the individual in the act uh, through the process and then finally we we go through the process of adapting that and continually monitoring any changes to your estate so not only do we have the decoys themselves we deploy we actually have the technology that finds where they should be deployed how they should be deployed in your state and then monitoring to see if there's any changes so you have a very simple environment to get set up that represents your real world and gives you a very high value alerts when something goes wrong so we give these realistic decoys we've talked about the breadcrumbs these false trails these freight credentials that we can that we can then do through lures but we also have the ability to do tight active directory integration and, and I'm sure that's one of the areas that um, we will hear more about during, later on in the session and it's based around doing good network analysis and giving you not only the network analysis of how we should be representing our decoys in your estate but actually giving you view on how the network is being used internally are there shadow IT type communications happening inside your network that we can actually learn from as well so it's not purely just a decoy technology so what we're going to do now is I'm going to pass over pass over the session now so that we can actually hear more about um, how the deception technology works in the nitty-gritty uh, and then we'll, we'll talk through a few use cases thank you Andy I'll be describing in high level our technology followed with few customers examples of how they are using the platform first Let's look at the deployment architecture. The system is connected to a mirror port to get the internal traffic and the internet traffic of the organization. The traffic is analyzed and used both for the intelligent deception and for the anomaly detection. Next, the system is connected to the trunk port. This enables us to deploy active decoys on multiple VLAN inside the organization. You can also connect us directly to several flat networks. The platform is managed by one manager that is controlling multiple sensors distributed in several geographic locations. The platform is available either as VM or as a hardware appliance. As soon as the sensors are deployed, they start sniffing the traffic and go through a discovery process identifying what you have in the organization. We discover the VLANs and the subnet. We discover the assets, the operating system, the applications, the assets are running on the network, the servers they are accessing, their communication channels with the internet, etc. 
This is an ongoing process that continuously updates the discovery database as changes are happening in the organization, enabling the system to keep the intelligent deception accurate at all times. This is an example of one villain in the organization. Based on the discovery process, we know the type of assets you have in this subnet the operating system, the applications, etc. Using this information, we deploy automatically the relevant decoys. So if we discovered this subnet is running a web server and shared folders and all the endpoints are running Windows 10, this is exactly the intelligent deception that is deployed in this subnet. It will match what you have in the subnet. The process is completely automated the only thing required from the administrator is to provide a range of IP addresses for the decoys. It is very important to note that the biggest challenge of a good deception sol solution is how it lures the attackers to access the decoys. Our solution uses several mechanisms to lure the attackers to the decoys. The first mechanism is done by the decoy themselves the decoys publish themselves in the network and communicate over protocols that lure attackers to be men in the middle and access the decoys, revealing their presence on the infected assets. The next step is building and distributing breadcrumbs to assets in the organization. Breadcrumbs is another technique to lure attacker to access the decoys. The idea behind breadcrumbs is that when attacker infects an asset, he doesn't know which asset is infected and where the valuable information of the organization resides. The attacker starts looking for information on the infected asset. He looks for files with password, he looks for credentials in memory, in the registry key, in emails, and more. The goal of the installed breadcrumbs is to lure the attackers to reach out and access the decoys. The breadcrumbs are directing the attacker towards the decoy system. It is important also to note that these breadcrumbs are not agent. They are all static data residing on the assets. The last part of the deception is luring the attackers to the decoys using Active Directory. The attacker, after infecting an endpoint, can access the Active Directory like any other user to map the organization and find out how he can continue its lateral movement activities. We define fake users on Active Directory, these fake users are running on the decoys and access the Active Directory from the decoys like any normal user in the organization. For example, log in in the morning, log out from time to time and looking for different services on the Active Directory. When the attacker is enumerating assets in the Active Directory and trying to map the organization, he will see the decoys and the fake users as high-privileged users and will be lured to access this system. As mentioned before, in parallel to the deception, the platform is analyzing the traffic, detecting communication of the attackers with command and control, data exfiltration, internal activities, and more. We are doing deep analysis of TCP, DNS, HTTP traffic, browsers activities, and other protocols. Thus, the platform provides an accurate, integrated platform of deception, traffic analysis, correlation, and great, what we call, security visibility into the internals of your organization. Before going on into the customer examples, I would like to make two comments. The first one is about deception in general. 
it is important to understand that deception doesn't trigger a lot of events. It is accurate. Even if you receive a low severity event, it is still accurate because someone accessed the deception layer while he was not supposed to do so. It can be an insider or it can be malicious intruder. This is the reason that when deception is implemented correctly, it is easy to deploy and have very low overhead for event analysis. The other comment is that during the last five years that I have met with a lot of CISOs and talked about post-bridge detection, all of them acknowledge that they cannot prevent all infection. It is like riding a motorcycle. Either you crashed at an accident or you will crash. And this is the reason why you need to have a detection mechanism for post-breach infection. The first, the first example is a, a bank. The customer has a small security team that is under a lot of pressure receiving too many events and IOCs that they need to analyze. They are using, of course, firewall, antivirus, IPS, and a SIM. And they were looking for a post-breach detection solution. Their infrastructure includes two data centers where the sensitive data is located. They had low visibility into the activities with the data center. And of course, they were worried about breaches and the fact that their visibility is not as good as it should be. Following the installation of the system, setting up the decoy or the deception layer was done quickly based on the automatic identification uh, and discovery of what is required and where it should be deployed. It is mostly done automatically there. If you speak with the CISO today, he will tell you that for the few first weeks, there were only low severity incidents and they mainly used the visibility features of the platform. Then we flagged one of the assets as infected. It triggered high severity incidents. The incident indicated that there is malware running on that asset and this malware is accessing the shared folders on the decoy. The incident happened several times. It wasn't a one-time incident. The interesting point here is that they ran several antivirus and forensic tools to find the malware on that asset. None of those tools were able to report anything. Nothing was revealed there. At that point, they called our customer support. We reviewed our platform remotely and insisted that there is malware running on this asset and that it is periodically accessing the decoy. We suggested them to inspect the pickup file we collect. This is one of the features of the solution. When an asset reach high severity, we automatically collect a pickup file of the traffic of the asset. Inspecting the pickup file showed clearly the activities of the malware with the decoys. They ran again their antivirus tools and again found nothing. Then they decided to re-image the asset. Indeed, after re-imaging the asset, the malware activities stopped and no more incidents were triggered. This example clearly shows the effectiveness of the platform and the value of the automation and accuracy to achieve great eff efficiency of the core and team in the organization without adding more overhead or adding more people to manage the system. The next example is a healthcare organization. Uh, they have an interesting and complex uh, environment. It is a hospital that is sharing data on their internal servers with external entities like other hospitals and clinicals. Their doctors are accessing other hospitals and clinicals and their data centers are in several countries in the US and their network includes private and public IP addresses. So there's access from IP addresses, public IP addresses into the organization. They did not use any solution for detection of lateral movement or inspecting east-west traffic. 
the hospital security team is not large enough to cope with the environment. They are short on analysts and forensic expertise. They are using several resources from an MSSP organization that are working in there on their premise. Their main goal is to protect the patient's data and record and be compliant with the security standards for medical institutions. The fact that the environment is open to remote access was revealed quite quickly. We found out that another hospital, which was guaranteed permission to access specific servers in the network, was trying to access other parts of the network. They hid the decoys and they were moving huge data amounts out of the hospital into their environment. That the team, of course, wasn't aware of that. There were multiple tries to exploit RDP and LDAP connections in the decoys coming from the hospital public IP addresses, which are owned by the hospital, of course. On another network in their environment that did not deploy deception, they suffered from ransom, ransomware attack. We were able to help in the post-breach analysis as we were inspecting the pipe to the internet and recorded the keys transferred and showed them how it was done. The customer had an interesting request. They requested what they called business analytics for the remote access to the internal servers by other doctors in other hospitals and clinicals, they wanted to know who is accessing from which clinic, when and how much. Their goal was to make sure that even though the environment is open to external hospitals, they are in control of who is really accessing their environment. In parallel to our POC, as they wanted to detect internal malicious activities, <coughs> they also conducted a POC of a hunting solution that is building a baseline of the internal organization and then triggering anomalies. They found out that it was triggering too many false positive, even when they invested a lot of time tuning it. And that was another reason why they choose to buy our solution. The last example I would like to cover is a technology company. This company grew through uh, acquisitions. Because of the way they grew, there is limited visibility to the networks and limited control over remote facilities, including one in India and one in Latin America. Still, the system needs to make sure there is good protection for the intellectual property, which is the main asset of this organization. So it's a distributed environment with different application and tools that the CISO needs to manage. This is a great example where you can see that white listing of application is not always foolproof. Very early in the deployment process, we triggered an incident on one of their administration machine used by the security team. The incident included detailed information about that machine that is mapping the entire file system of one of the decoys. The security team analyzed the incident and revealed it is triggering by an IT tool that is supposed to monitor the health of certain servers and assets in the organization and alarm in case of issues. The monitoring should have been done based on TCP connections only, certainly not to search the file system. They immediately removed the tool and checked what kind of data it was sending outside. This is an example of a product you use or an application you whitelist and approve to run in your environment, yet you really don't know what it is doing and you never check what other things it is doing and whether it has potential risk to the organization. In this organization, we also found assets running term, which put the, the intellectual pro property of the organization at risk. As can be seen from the examples 
since the troll usage inside the organization is quite frequent. We had another very interesting finding in this organization. It shows that our platform approach of having deception integrated with traffic analysis and the security visibility is very valuable. We triggered separate incident that together showed a tool grabbing file from decoy, grabbing files from endpoints in the organization and uploading the files over HTTP to the cloud. When the security team investigated those incidents, they were able to quite quickly state that it is an in-house developed tool that is used to backup files to the cloud. They had three notes about it, how um, incident triggering. One is that they need to check why it was accessing the decoys, because the decoys was not supposed to be accessed by this tool. The second is that this tool is acting like a malware, and the fact we detected this activity means we will detect other malicious activities done by malware inside the organization. And the third note was that none of their current security tools were able to detect these activities, uh, and that really convinced them that about the value and the strengths of our tool. Last slide I would like to talk about is the catch the flag exercise we have done. We have built an environment that simulates an organization environment, including data, <coughs> domain controller, active directory, router switch, and endpoints and asset inside the organization. We invent invited attackers to get into this environment and see if they can find the valuable information we put on one of the assets inside the organization. The pen tester, the red teams that came over, knew that there is deception inside this environment. Still, all of the attackers tripped the deception. Either they hit the decoys, they used the breadcrumbs, they went into the Active Directory and from there they went into the decoys. Each one of them hit the deception, which clearly shows that deception has value as a post-breach detection in order to limit the damage that is caused to the organization. What we noticed at is that the deception increased what we call the knowledge gap because it gives the, the attacker different direction to go into which are not correct, causing them to waste time and lead to an early detection of the attackers that are already inside the organization. At this point, I would like to pass the presentation back to Andy. Well, thank you very much, Doran. It's um, great to see some really interesting case studies there from our customers. It's also key to understand that the analysts are talking about this technology currently, and it's one of the key technologies that Gartner were highlighting for 2017 for organizations to evaluate and to look at using to help protect their estate and to take to the next level of proactive defense. Um, Interestingly enough, they also recognized us as a cool vendor in 2017, um, specifically around the top spin technology, this this technology itself. So it was good to get that recognition from, uh, from the industry as a whole, rather than just us saying this is a great technology to look at. The industry is, is also highlighting that. So that brings us pretty much on to some questions. We've had a, a few come in during the session. Um, so just to reiterate, the first one was how difficult is Fidelity Deception to deploy? Well, as we've seen from the, the session that, that Doran did with, in the middle there, we've seen it's a very straightforward technology to be deployed. It can either be deployed as a, as a virtual machine or as an appliance. Either way, that's a very easy technology to get up and running. Um, and then from there, we can then see, get 
the system automatically learns what sees on the network and sets itself up. So it's a very easy technology to get up and running. And that's what leads into the second question that came through is how many people does it take to manage these sorts of estates? So as an automatic deployment tool, once it's already deployed and it monitors and it evolves over time, it's a very simple technology to manage. By that, I mean about two hours a week will keep this platform up and running, work out what changes need to be done, help you to OK any additional services to be deployed into your estate on the decoy platform. Obviously, if you get an alert on the platform, that's an investigation you want to do. And that will just depend on how long that investigation takes. It will, you know, maybe highlight a machine is compromised or someone's coming in to a hit in your decoy, in which case you will need to investigate that like you would any other investigation. And that would fit very well with the rest of the Fidelis technology in the ADR space, being able to investigate what's happening on an endpoint, what process was talking etc as we go through and then the, the last question I've got that's come through is how Fidelis deception can be used in a pro breach environment so again this fits very well with the capture the flag type exercise um, it's a good way of deploying the technology as a proactive defense model but post a breach it's a great way of seeing if you really have cleaned out the environment um, it will monitor sit there monitoring so that if you do have people that are still inside your environment post a breach it can pick up these in state um, just through east west movement and we can then see if there's anything else trying to traverse or actively attack you from within inside your network and also pick up whether it was an insider in the first in the first case so it gives you a great way of validating have i now got a clean environment are things settling down post a breach so it's, it gives you that extra level of confidence this doesn't only have to be deployed post breach but can be there as a proactive part of your defense strategy well hopefully what we've done today is get across how the technology works, how it can be used, what we've seen success from our customers using the technology. We'd actually really like to talk more with you around this. So if you've, you find something interesting with the, with the session today, please you know contact us to, to book a demonstration. You can do that either online or send us an email directly. And there is the, the data sheet available both um, specifically around deception technology, but also about our ADR platform as a whole. And of course, the Capture the Flag white paper is available on our website now, so you can understand how we run that exercise and all those pieces around there. Or if you just want to talk more specifically how this technology might fit in with your environment, please contact us. We'd be very happy to talk to you about the technology or, or range a demo or even go that ne next step and help you build a proof of concept around this tech, around our solution. So thank you once again for attending. Uh, if you do want to contact me, that's my, my details there. Um, please get in contact and we'll work out the best way to, to help you move forward. So I'll thank uh, Doran again once more and thank you all very much for attending our webinar.